So, we're good to go. So, welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Wednesday, December 9th. I am your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. So, here are the news stories for the day from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. Three members of the Eastern Band of the Cherokee have been sentenced to prison for the stabbing and beating death of another tribal member in North Carolina. The U.S. Attorney's Office announced December 7th that 21-year-old Danell Bigwitch and 30-year-old Dwayne Mitchell Littlejohn pled guilty to second-degree murder. Also, 35-year-old Daniel Lee Reed pled guilty to voluntary manslaughter in the death of Danny Jackson in November of 2008 on the Cherokee Reservation. Big Witch was sentenced to 16 years in prison. Little John was sentenced to 17 years and Reed received a six and a half year sentence. All three were ordered to pay restitution to the victim's estate. The Bureau of Indian Affairs has abandoned its bid to uh, acquire excess Navy property on uh, Aquid, Aquidneck Island on behalf of the Narragansett tribe. The Bureau of Indian Affairs said in a letter made public December 7th that it no longer was pursuing an application for the property. It did not say why. The tribe had sought 260 acres that became available through the base realignment and closure process. Federal agencies were given the first opportunity to apply for the land. Tina Dolan, executive director of the Aquidneck Island Planning Commission, said the property offered major economic benefits. Narragansett uh, leader John Brown said the tribe was exploring its options and did not consider the matter a done deal. Crow Creek Sioux tribal members and supporters say they will set up teepees on land auctioned off by the Internal Revenue Service. Tribal chairman Brandon uh, Sazu says he intends to fast and pray on the land until I drop, quote unquote. The IRS last week auctioned off a large swath of land owned by the impoverished tribe to help pay off more than $3 million in back taxes, penalties, and interest. The tribe says the sale is illegal under federal law protecting American Indian land and have, uh, they have sued to block the sale. A judge let it proceed but uh, promised to schedule a trial to hear the tribe's argument uh, in the near future. And it's cold out there for even people in a teepee, I would think. A federal judge has granted two months for settlement talks in a decade-old discrimination lawsuit filed by American Indians against the Federal Agricultural Department. The two sides in the case asked Judge Emmett Sullivan for 60 days. Sullivan has moved a status hearing in the case that was scheduled for, uh, February, uh, for today to February 10th. The lawsuit, filed in 1999, contends Indian farmers and ranchers lost hundreds of millions of dollars during the past three decades because of discrimination in lending by the Agricultural Department's Farm Service Agency. Agricultural Secretary Tim Vilsack told Indian farmers and ranchers during a meeting in Washington, D.C. last month that the department was committed to resolving the litigation. Governor Jim Doyle has signed into law a bill designed to bring Wisconsin into better compliance with a 30-year-old federal law related to the welfare of American Indian children. Doyle's office said uh, he signed the bill on December 8th, and that bill will strengthen connections between Indian children and their tribes. The new law attempts to ensure that the child welfare system within the state of Wisconsin works with the tribes to promote the best interest of Indian children. The state law clarifies requirements under the 1978 federal law that until now had been left to varied interpretations by local agencies. The State Department of Children and Families has also received $850,000 to train local tribes, county officials, and judges to understand new requirements under the law. And the big news, as most people read on Twitter and Facebook and MySpace and all over the social networking yesterday, the Obama administration yesterday on December 8th proposed spending more than $3 billion to settle a long-running lawsuit with Native American tribes that claimed they were swindled out of billions of dollars in royalties for oil, ga oil gas, grazing, and other leases dating back more than a century. Those leases have been overseen by the Interior Department since 1887. If cleared by Congress and a federal judge, the settlement would be the largest Indian claim ever approved against the U.S. government, exceeding the combined total of all previous settlements of Indian claims. 
Under the agreement announced, the Department of Interior would distribute $1.4 billion to more than 300,000 Native American tribal members to compensate them for historical accounting claims, errors, and discrepancies, and to resolve future claims. The government also will spend $2 billion to buy back and consolidate tribal lands broken up in a previous generations through the allotment and airship programs. The program would allow individual tribal members to obtain cash payments for land interest divided amongst numerous family members and return the land to tribal control. The settlement also would create a scholarship account of up to $60 million for tribal members to attend college or vocational school. Uh, last year, a federal judge ruled that the Indian plaintiffs were entitled to $455 million, a fraction of the $47 billion or more the tribes have said they were owed. So, big news out of Washington, D.C., and that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to say miigwech for joining with us. Come again soon.